What? 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 What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Friday, and welcome to Liquor Up. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and this is my dad, Roly. So, uh, if you guys aren't familiar with Liquor Run, uh, I bring the watch talk, he brings the wine, uh, and we jump into the ball. So, let's do it. All right, before we jump into today's topic, a quick wristwatch check. What are you wearing, Daddy? Oh, my uh, Breitling Colt. I haven't worn this in a while. I love that watch. Right? I had it locked away, actually. That's why I had it safe. Yeah, that safe was keeping. Okay. Love the size. Love the size. This is when the days when Breitlings, you know, uh, not to dis modern Breitlings, but this is when, you know, they weren't 45 millimeter in advertisers. Do you know what right. I mean? Uh, so it's, it's, it's very cool. Uh, or I don't just mean the size. It's more so the blinginess factor that bothers me. Yeah, it, it's, it's over, they're over accessorized. Yeah, this looks like a tool watch. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, a raw piece of steel with, with, with great instrument throughout. So uh, I love it. What I do you wear? My, uh, my personal day chest. I love that watch. Remember when I got it? I do. It was, a, it was an awesome, awesome week. Yeah. yeah. I felt really irresponsible for buying it. Yeah. Uh, admittedly so. I was 18. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but a couple of days after, I forgot about how irresponsible it was, and I just started enjoying it. Yeah. So, uh, and the rest is, you know, history. And you so, paid us back. And I paid you back. So that's what's on our wrist. So today we're going to be talking um, about this style conundrum, I suppose, mm. um, of matching your watch strap to your belt and your shoes. And while doing that, we're going to drink a bottle of what? We're going to have some Argentinian Malbec. Okay, cool. We've done this before, right? We have many, many, many uh, ago. months ago, episodes ago. Yeah, yeah. when we first started uh, Liquor on. I love the labeling here. Isn't that great? I think it's beautiful. La Posta. La Posta by Angel Paolucci. Cool. I think that because you and I do dress often, you know, yes. because we really do enjoy, you know, getting dressed and it's not a burden, it's it's much more so something, you know, a way to have fun and express ourselves. I think that we are very relevant to this conversation. You know, uh, not that we are authorities on mm. what, you know, leathers should match, but I think that, you know, we, we have a pretty well-founded opinion. Have you heard of people going nuts over this? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, where it's only, it becomes an obsession that you cannot wear a certain... Uh, it's got to be le- black strap, black yes. belt, black shoes. Yes. Yes. Brown strap, <laughs> brown belt, brown shoes. Right. It's exhausting, right? Yeah, you get too much time on your hands. So if you guys feel this way, or if you guys are wondering if this is a faux pas or what, stay tuned because we'll dive into that conversation more deeply uh, after we open up this bottle of wine. So let's yeah, do it. let's do it. So um, Malbec. Malbec is a um, is a European grape. No. Um, very well known in France. Uh, it's it's used as a blending grape in 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 Bordeaux, but but also. It, uh, it, it really rises and shines in Cahors, okay. uh, France. So you, they make some wonderful, wonderful inky dark wines, uh, you know, uh, from, from, uh, from Malbec. But something happened, you know, in the New World. And, and, and uh, I guess at the turn of the century, of early eight, uh, the 1800s, I suppose, whenever there was, I guess at the, the, the onset of, of <clears throat> migration from Europe to South America, uh, which... I guess would be would be maybe in the in, in the twentieth century. Malbec found the new home. Okay, and Malbec really shines, shines in Argentina. There. Yeah, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it definitely has a different. It's a bit of an expat. It's an expat, yeah, it, but boy, cool. this expat has really done very well. Uh, you know, we we probably all drink more Malbec that's made in America. Yeah. Than 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 Caors. I think it's pretty safe to say Argentina just. You know, listen. We've talked about the Andes, right? In Argentina, you know, the 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 the, uh, the Mendoza region in in, in Argentina, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, that's fertile ground for winemaking, uh, and there's there's such a deep rooted um, you know legacy, I suppose, uh, because a lot of well French uh, and Italian <coughs> moved moved to Argentina, dur- especially during World War, World War II, II, right? So. Um, that's they, 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 the Italian Argentinian. That's right. They, that's Abel right. Donzieri. Uh, that's right. <laughs> they, they, they all they, they they're Italian. So not to get too long winded about this, um, uh, Malbec uh, rises and shines in, in 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 Argentina. This this particular bottle, uh, it's, so it's uh, grown uh, by Angel Paolucci. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did notice though that that the um, this was created by fourth generation vendor. Uh, <coughs> Laura Catena. Catena, Catena is, yeah. Catena is a huge Absolutely. name in Argentina. Yeah. So this comes from a we very, very, very reputable winemaker. Yeah. 
uh, in Argentina. But you know, enough of the wine. Um, let's have a sip. Let's let's, let's, uh, let's sip. Cool. Um, so so you know, b- back into the the whole strap, you know, conversation. Um, I'm not even conflicted, to be honest. I think that it is so impractical mm-hmm. to match your strap, belt, and shoes that I really wouldn't even consider it. Now, that doesn't mean that, that, that you should totally throw out what something looks like. You know, I think it's important to like the way you look. I mean, uh, which is like a, I think that's like a men's warehouse commercial. <laughs> but yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's very important. So if it's something that you're anal about, uh, then that's fine. Go ahead. Uh, but, but for me... Uh, I just, I, I guess I, I mess around with so many strap colors. Mm-hmm. It's totally impractical. You know, I mean, you have the t- I don't even, I don't own a shoe that, that looks like the teenage type one. You know, first of all, I'm not even wearing a belt right now, but, right. Uh, and I'm wearing dark brown shoes. I mean, right. who's going to look at the teenage type one and my dark brown boots, you know, and say, oh, wow, like, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't look right. Yeah. And if they did, I don't really care what they right. think about it. Yeah. You know I, mean? I, I, I think, I think uh, you can have fun with fashion, right? Uh, it should not be. It should not get to the point where it becomes now an obsession. That, that well, that's not so much of an obsession. It, it's more so like you know, you shouldn't be ruled by rules. Rule. That you don't care. That's about. what I mean. If you care about them, yeah, that's fine. Right. Like, go ahead. Yeah, I, I but appreciate. But I'm more talking about people that are, look, you know, on I, the border. I appreciate when I see a guy wearing a, a, especially like a like a let's say a camel suede belt. And the shoes you wear, like loafers. Yes. Yeah, that that to me shows that you man, you really took time to think about the outfit you're wearing, yeah. you know, and everything else, and you know the trousers, etc. And you just look great, right? Um, but if you saw that same guy with a with a dark brown leather strap on his Rolex sub, for instance, that's not going to throw you off. No, I, I mean, I think, I think, uh, I think now you start to say, "Wow, man, this guy really put a hell of a lot of thought into this." So now the strap matches the belt. The no, belt no, 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 no. The opposite. Was, I'm, what saying, are you saying? I'm saying, if it's a dark brown leather strap oh, and light, no. light brown suede, you know, belt and shoes, no. it's just not. No, no, I don't no, know. And no, you know, once again, no. it, this sounds insignificant, no. but uh, you know, but I can't tell you how many people I know are like tortured by this idea. Like I see it mm. all of the time on, on people asking for my opinion on this and recommendation, you know, and uh, mm. you know, I, I do my best to, to dress formally, you know, as often as I can. And frankly, uh, and as long as it's complimentary, I'm cool. You know, it doesn't have to be matchy matchy. And frankly, what I think is the one of the worst things <clears throat> is if you're trying to match leathers, uh, a brown leather shoe and a yeah. brown leather belt, and it's and it's off. Off, yeah. That that throws yeah. my eye for a loop. Yeah. I, I would rather, uh, you know, a different color brown braided belt, you know what I mean? Uh, something that, that complements the, the pair of shoes rather than something that's trying to, you know, mimic it. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised you get a lot of questions about that. All the time. All the time. People, that have, they go in the office every day, they're wearing a suit, they're wearing belt shoes, you know, and strap. Should I really go out of my way to get six more straps and four more belts? Yeah, I'm like, no. Mm. It, to me, it's, it's so whack. Look, look at Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank. Always you know, wears a red strap. Red strap on his Panerai. On his Panerai. Yeah, he wears a yeah. black suit, black you know, yeah. uh, uh, shoes and black belt, and he wears a red strap on his Panerai. And mm-hmm. it looks phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I think he would look a little bit too much like Eddie Murphy if he was wearing a red, you know, red leather belt and shoes. Right. You know, it looked right. a little ridiculous. Right. Uh, so, so no, guys. You know, at least, at least in my opinion, and apparently yours as well. No. You know, look, look good, be comfortable, compliment. But you know, I don't. I, you know, at least in my opinion, you don't have to go crazy matching stuff. It's just <laughs> oh, what a no. freaking headache. No. You know, and no. for what? You know what I mean? No. Like it's so much easier just to, uh, to no. compliment. And quite frankly, if you if you if you if you browse through any men's fashion magazine or even you know I, I love to look at uh even like suit supply you know yeah. always shop there you see how they how they work with different color schemes it's not oh, necessarily yeah. always a a match match you know match 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 yeah. right it's something that actually has different texture yeah even some different color of course you know to, it because it just doesn't it, it, it's like wearing a black suit with a black High in a black shirt. Right. No, it, it, it's, it's it doesn't very, work. Very rarely does that work. It doesn't work. You know, it doesn't very, work. Very rarely. You've got to be an overweight Steven Seagal to put that. Yeah. Off. <laughs> oh my God, Steven Seagal. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So I'm, I'm glad that we agree. Stop torturing yourself, guys. Because yeah, you know, don't torture. Take yourself. a step back. Yeah. Take a step back and breathe. You know. Yeah, have fun. But uh, yeah. Okay. Let's get back into the wine. So, what do you think? Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, 
you know, I'm not. A, I, I typically don't necessarily like uh, New World wines. It's just my prejudice, my you know, uh, my bias. This is really nice. It has a lot of fruit, a lot of berry. It's got a lot too. of fruit. Yeah, but it's also I think it's very uh, medium bodied, and it's and it doesn't have a very uh, fierce grip. Uh, tan. No, it doesn't. So. I mean, I'm gonna give this wine absolutely thumbs up. This is a, a, a really nice How wine. How much was this bottle? Um, I'm gonna say it was about fourteen, fifteen dollars. Okay. Maybe a little, maybe a little bit more. But I think around fifteen dollars. So you really can't go wrong. I think you could even for people that even like um, I don't know if you like Merlot or if you like Cabernet. This is a really cool uh, alternate to try. You know, if you want to try, if you want to mess around with Malbec. Yeah, it's so, interesting. It's interesting. It's got almost like a bitter note at the end, doesn't it? Um, let me I, see. I, I'm still sick, guys. So. Mm -hmm. At the end. I don't okay, taste, okay. I don't taste okay. bitterness. Yeah, no, again, I taste a lot of berry. <clears throat> I mean, it's just chock, chock full of, uh, of fruit. You know, and not in a jammy way because there's, once again, there's good acidity. By the way, last that last episode we did, uh, huh? the Marcus Altenberger, yeah. I'm still thinking about that wine. You enjoyed that's it? A, that's a really good wine. Yeah. It was a great yeah. episode. We had a lot yeah. of fun with that. Yeah, it was good. What did we talk about? We talked about uh, uh, oh the, the problems in the watch and the wine world. Right. Yeah, you know, there, there are right. a lot of problems in both these worlds yeah. right now. I definitely recommend you guys watch that episode after this one uh, because we dove into some serious topics about these two industries uh, and, and the problems that are facing them in 2018, basically. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Dad, thank you so much for introducing me to this wine. I Cheers. think it's quite good. I, I'm still having a little problem with my, my stuffy nose, but, yeah. uh, but thank you so much. You got it. Thank you guys so much for Cheers, watching. Guys. We'll all see you tomorrow Bye -bye. on uh, STH Live.